In this video, I'm going to talk about Samsung's latest NVMe SSD, uh, the 990 EVO Plus. And according to Samsung, uh, this drive is meant to be their new mid-range uh, everyday use kind of a drive, uh, which means that it is supposed to offer a very good balance between uh, what it offers in terms of performance and how much you need to pay for it. So let's check it out. Uh, let's see how it actually performs and if it's worth getting it or not. Let's begin. The 990 EVO Plus will be available in 1TB, 2TB and 4TB capacities and I'm very happy to see that they finally added a 4TB option to their EVO lineup. The drive itself does come without a heatsink and as far as I can see there are no heatsink versions available uh, but as always I'm going to talk about thermals a bit later in this video. The drive's layout is pretty simple. It is single-sided and on the two terabyte model, you can already see where the second flash chip would be if you go for a four terabyte model. And here we also have a controller. Uh, there is no DRM cache. And on top of that, we have a simple sticker. Uh, the only thing on the back of the drive is a very thin heat spreader. Now, as usual, Samsung designs and makes all their SSD parts, so they don't share too many details regarding the exact components that are used. Uh, just that you get a controller, a VNAND TLC flash, and that it uses HMB or host memory buffer for caching. And the EVO Plus basically uses the same controller as the previous 990 EVO, uh, just with faster memory and this time around with new firmware, which means that just like the 990 EVO, it can also run both as a Gen 4x4 and Gen 5x2 drive, which can give you some benefits in some specific cases like SSD add-in cards or some uh, specific or upcoming laptops. Now, I do like the fact that they give some very clear performance specifications. Uh, a lot of budget and mid-range SSDs only list sequential performance claims, uh, which makes it easier to change components later on, but still fulfill that required speed. Uh, while Samsung here gives some more random performance numbers as well, which I suppose is the benefit of not relying on other manufacturers and just making your own parts. Uh, other than that, the specs are pretty typical. You get 1.5 million hour mean time between failures, a 600 total terabytes written rating per terabyte of capacity, a five year long warranty and support for various encryption options. Uh, but let's check some of the benchmarks and see how it actually performs. As always, I'm going to start with the PC Mark 10 quick benchmark, uh, which is a nice bundle of tests that simulate a lot of different but simple little things that we do with our PCs every single day. Uh, like uh, working with documents, for example, looking at your vacation photos, uh, loading your games and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark to look at uh, if you're looking for a main drive for very basic use or you're looking for a secondary drive that you want to use for these uh, simple little things. The 990 EVO Plus starts off really well, scoring 753 megabytes per second on average. Uh, it is a nice improvement over the 990 EVO and it puts it near the top of the graph, beating the 990 Pro, the T500 from Crucial and becoming the fastest Gen 4 drive in this test thus far. Only higher end Gen 5 drives are positioned above this one. The full PC Mark 10 suite simulates a bit more intense and a bit more serious use of the drive and this this is a great benchmark for anyone that is looking for a new main drive or maybe needs to run some applications that can be very heavy on your SSD, uh, like editing videos, for example. And the 990 EVO Plus still holds up really well. It is a small improvement over the older 990 EVO. Uh, it's still competing with other high-end uh, Gen 4 drives and even some proper Gen 5 SSDs. And as you can see, once again, you don't necessarily need a DRAM cache for medium heavy use anymore. And that HMB is probably going to become the standard for most users in the future. Now, looking at latency, it is pretty much in line with the previous results, keeping up well with the best Gen 4 drives that you can currently buy. 
Now the consistency test is not that relevant for a lot of you because uh, it simulates a very extreme, a very intense and a very long multi-hour workload that most of you will probably never ever do. But it is still very interesting to see how a drive holds up when you really stress it for such a long time. And as expected, this is where the 990 EVO Plus starts to drop a lot. It's still an upgrade over the older 990 EVO, but once you start stressing the drive beyond its caching capabilities, uh, the performance can be even worse than on much older drives than this one. Which just shows that it is not meant for this constant and really intense workload. And if you need an SSD for that, uh, you should probably look at the drives at the top of this graph. 3D Mark Storage is another collection of tests uh, that simulates a lot of different gaming related tasks. So uh, loading games, for example, installing your games, uh, moving game folders around, recording your gameplay and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that is looking for an SSD to use for gaming. And the 990 EVA Plus ended up near the top of the graph yet again, uh, showing an improvement over the 990 EVO and competing with high-end Gen 4 drives like Crucial T500, SK Hynix P41 Platinum and the WD SN850X. And if we just look at the gaming results that I personally find the most important, uh, which is uh, loading times, uh, installing games and updating your games, the 990 EVO Plus scores about 90% of the fastest Gen 4 drive I've tested so far, which is the T500 from Crucial. So that is a great result, and its main competitor here is probably the Lexar NM790, which is another DRM-less drive that is typically on the cheaper side as well. Sequential read and write performance numbers don't really represent a proper real-life use as well as previous benchmarks do but it can still be a useful metric for some people. Uh, it is one area where the old 990 EVO didn't do so great, but the new 990 EVO Plus holds up pretty well. It can write at around 5,500 megabytes per second, and it roughly uses up the entire bandwidth when reading sequential data. So that is a very good result. Just remember that even though this technically puts it above the specs that uh, Sony recommends for PlayStation 5 use, the PS5 doesn't do HMB caching, so I still think it might be better to use a DRAM-based drive instead. Now, I haven't seen any proper evidence that a DRAM-less drive in a PlayStation would hurt its performance, uh, but I'm still finding a way how to test this properly uh, in a non-tedious way. So for now, I would say uh, just keep it safe and use a DRAM-based drive instead. Uh, when it comes to thermals, it kind of depends a bit on what you do with your drive. Now, Samsung claims that the drive will not uh, thermal throttle when you write sequential data to it uh, when testing at a 25 degree room temperature. However, PC cases tend to run quite a bit warmer than 25 degrees and uh, random workloads also create more heat. Now, when you actually stress the drive without a heatsink or any extra airflow, it gets very hot and it does throttle. So like with any other drive that performs well, I really do recommend that you use a heatsink that comes with your motherboard or just any other third-party heatsink that you can get for a couple of euros or a couple of dollars. I'm going to leave some suggestions in the description box down below. That being said, if you just plan to buy this drive for some very, very light use instead, you're going to be fine without a heatsink. Though, I still think that you should probably use one uh, if your system has space for it. And last but not the least, I do want to give some credit to Samsung for their Magician software package. Now, most SSD software packages are pretty rough, uh, but the Magician does work well. It regularly pushes firmware updates for their models, and it just feels like a very user-friendly modern app. So overall, the 990 EVO Plus is a well-performing drive. It is a significant upgrade over the 990 EVO, which was fine, but never really that impressive. Uh, it is one of the most convincing DRAM-less drives that we've seen so far. And with Samsung, uh, we can be pretty sure that the components are not gonna just change 
overnight. But whether it makes sense to buy it, it will totally depend on the price. And since it just launched, uh, the price is a bit of a problem at the moment. So recommended retail price usually means very little. So I'm going to use local prices for this example. And this should be more or less the same in most regions so far. So here in the Netherlands, uh, Samsung's own retail price for the two terabyte model was 220 euros, which makes no sense at all. However, Amazon was taking pre-orders at 170 euros last week, and this week it's actually selling for 149 euros. Now that's still a bit high when you can get a P41 Platinum for 140 euros, but it does mean that the pricing of the 990 EVO Plus is moving in the right direction and very quickly. And that is also the thing with SSDs in general, and then especially so with Samsung. The prices are really high at launch, but then over time, they come down and balance out to the point where they will make perfect sense. So it is a very good performer overall. It has some of the extra benefits that Samsung offers, like a software, consistency of parts, and the fact that you can basically buy these SSDs anywhere in the world. It just needs a bit more time till it's priced even more competitively, I would say. Now that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end of this video. I hope it was interesting enough and helpful enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.